I said, this is nuts that I'm going to have to, that I constantly looking for places to leave California and take my films to shoot elsewhere because I, they're less than a million dollars. And I'm thinking there's got to be hundreds, if not thousands of other independent filmmakers in California who are doing the exact same thing. It's just crazy to leave that amount of business off the table in the state of California and make us go elsewhere and not employ the people and do all the incentives that, you know, that these things can offer. Hi, my name is Jim Ellis and you're watching Industry Insights, where we bring in industry experts to share their knowledge and experience to the next generation of filmmakers. We're here at the Film Hub. It's a co-working space for filmmakers in the beautiful, film-friendly city of Vista. Excited to bring in a friend of ours, Jeff Deverett, who's been here before. Uh, Jeff's an independent filmmaker, uh, actually born and raised in Canada and moved to San Diego to produce films here. And we're going to talk to him about financing films and the things he's working on to bring uh, filmmaking to this area, which is pretty exciting because uh, we are kindred spirits on that. We've been working together on this for a number of years. Um, Jeff and I met, well, it's got to be eight years ago, right? Yeah, at least. A while ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's always good to spend time with you helping moving the industry into this uh, area of San Diego. Um, but yeah, it's good to see... Vista supplied a no no filmmaking fee for us. Uh, that's good. That's very tech. That's friendly for filmmakers if they don't yeah. have to pay fees for permits. Wonderful. Yeah. So that's been good. So I understand that you've been working in this category pretty deeply for the last six years and helping to do the same in San Diego. And we want to get into that. But but first, but first, um, I'd like to know what the difference is, and probably a lot of the folks on um, watching. The difference between tax credits, grants, and rebates. Let, let me explain kind of on a global scale. So various states in the United States, about 28 of them right now, and various countries around the world, like Canada and Australia and various European countries, they want to incentivize filmmakers to come and shoot their content in their region. And the reason they want to bring it is because filmmaking is can be a very lucrative industry. And... If you bring a film, let's say you bring, you know, a $10 million feature film to a region, um, that could supply a lot of jobs for local people and a lot of economic activity and spending within that region. So local governments have, and state governments have figured out, hey, this is a good industry to incentivize filmmakers to come to our state and film. And in order to incentivize them, we're going to give them financial incentives because they've done the math on this and they figured out that if they give a certain amount of financial incentive, which we'll talk about grants, rebates, tax credits, um, then hopefully that will attract filmmakers to come bring their, their films to those regions and create a lot of jobs and economic activity within there, which is good for their local economy. So that's how this all started, all right? And it primarily started in Canada, actually, with the Canadian government and then the provincial governments trying to draw the business out of Hollywood. And they were very successful at doing it. They took tens of millions and now it's billions of dollars away from primarily Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And then, then other big states got into the action. Louisiana probably was the biggest when it first started. And now Georgia is the biggest. Georgia is a multi-billion dollar film has an industry because mm -hmm. of the incentives that they provide. Okay, so what are those incentives? So basically, these programs, I'm just going to describe a basic one, okay? They, they come in different shapes and forms and whatever. But let's look at a, a typical state incentive program. So they would offer three types of incentives. And, and in no particular order, let's start with grants. They're the easiest. So there are various foundations, institutions, government organizations, um, that will give a grant to a filmmaker to help them make their film. Sometimes it's regionally based, sometimes it doesn't matter if they're making, say, a documentary, say, about climate change or something like that, or an organization wants that filmmaker to share that important message with the world. So a grant is basically free money to the filmmaker. Um, some foundation might say, um, 
apply for it. Here's $100,000 of a gift to you to work on your film and hopefully share your mess, important message with the world. And the grant comes before the filmmaker even shoots. So they know, and sometimes the reason they even can afford to shoot is because they get this grant. So a grant is basically a gift of money to a filmmaker to enable them to make that film. Okay, the next would be a tax credit. So a tax credit program says to the filmmaker, if you come to our state and you shoot and you use our resources, i.e. our labor, like our local labor, like you employ the people in our region and you hire, you know, your services here, your equipment, your trucks, your, your hotels, your food, all this kind of stuff. If you, the more you use our resources, the more we will give you back as a percentage of that. And these are what we call, these using these resources, these are called eligible expenses in a tax credit program. So if you, first you would apply to the program, and if you get accepted, because some of these programs have limited funds, right? So they say, you know, you have to be, we have to approve you. Then you would say, okay, now here's our qualifying categories. Labor is always for sure the top category because they want to employ people. Then in addition to that, you know, all these other things that would qualify. And there's a couple things that don't qualify. Like, you know, if you were to take somebody golfing or something like that, that would be not probably a qualified expenditure in most places, mm -hmm. for lack of a better example, all right? So you have this list of qualifying expenditures, and it's most of the things you need to make your sh movie. Now you go and you start spending, and you have to spend a certain amount of money in their region in order to satisfy the criteria of the program. So let's say you spend, you know, 80% of, you spend, let's, I'm gonna do math on a lower budget. Let's, let's say, say $10 million budget, okay? And you spend 775 million, or 7.5 7 million. Okay, three quarters of your budget you spend in that state on those things. So of that money, they will, depending on the program, what they're offering, um, let's say it's a 25% rebate, then of that, the money that you just spent, they will, or sorry, tax credit, they will credit back to you 25% of those eligible expenditures. Now, there's a lot of things you have to go through. You have to submit all your budgets and everything like that, and then you have to go through an audit at the end of the shoot to make sure that you actually spent that money. Right. Okay, and then they say, okay, they tabulate it, this qualifies, this qualifies, this, and they add it all up and say you spent, you know, whatever, let's say 10 million on qualified expenditures. So we keep, keep the math simple. And they say you're eligible for a 25% tax rebate. So then they say you have earned a two and a half million dollar tax rebate or credit. I keep throwing around mm -hmm. credit and rebate. So the credit basically says you can use that two and a half million dollars to offset the tax that you would otherwise pay in our region. Okay, so now, if you're based in that region and you have a company and you're earning revenue and that revenue is taxable, mm -hmm. if you have taxable revenue of two and a half million dollars, then you can take your two and a half million dollar tax credit and offset it against your tax payable and have no tax payable. So That's the only way it can be used. This is level one, okay? So everybody's saying, okay, that's wonderful, great idea. You know, now you're a local company and you're earning revenue and you know, you can offset your, your taxable income, okay? Your tax, oh, your tax owing, not mm -hmm. your taxable income. But then, two things. What if you're not a local company? What if you go to somebody else's state and you don't have taxable revenue and you have no tax owing there? Mm -hmm. So what you have to do there is what we call a transferable tax credit, where you can actually sell your tax credit to another company in the state Another that way. is buying tax credits because they have a lot of taxable revenue. And so maybe they would offer you, and there's a whole industry, like the state of Georgia that offers tax transferable tax credits. There's an entire industry of transferring tax credits. Mm -hmm. There's brokers, there's companies that line up to buy these tax credits. Now they want to buy them at a discount. Sure. So if you're selling a you know, $2.5 million tax credit, they might offer you 2.2 million, get a $300,000 you know, bonus. Right. Plus, there's going to be brokerage fees and that type of thing. Yeah. So your two hundred two point five million dollar tax credit might only actually amount net to you two million dollars because you've had to sell it to another company. Yeah, but it's cash to you. It's cash to you, so you do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but you have to figure that it's a twenty percent tax credit, not a twenty five percent tax sure. credit. 
Okay, so those are states that offer transferable tax credits. All right, now, there's this other thing called rebates. People call them rebatable tax credits, but it's not true. It's called a rebate, all right? So a rebate, oh, by the way, there's one other thing with the tax credits. What happens if you don't, um, you are local, but you're not earning enough revenue to actually have that amount of tax credit to offset? Good question. Then you also sell it. You sell it to somebody else, or you defer it to another year. Okay. Okay, so they, this is all tax, this is IRS stuff. This is not filmmaking stuff. So you can move them forward, you can move t tax credits forward and back, you okay. know. Okay, so now there are other states that offer not tax credits but rebates, meaning that they, when you earn that $2.5 million amount, because you've sp spent that much in qualified expenditures, um, what they do is they say, we're just gonna write you a check for $2.5 million and give it to you. You don't have to offset it against any tax owing. So for low, which is much easier, much better, much cleaner, all right? So for low budget indie films, a rebate program is much, much better and easier to navigate. Mm -hmm. And so generally you'll see the states that offer rebates generally have a longer line up to apply to the program than states that offer tax credits. And it's usually the bigger companies and the bigger productions that go to the tax credit states. Mm -hmm. Because when you're a low budget indie filmmaker and you're say shooting for a half a million dollars, and you're gonna get, say, a rebate of 20%, say, 100,000. It's too much work, effort, and everything to try to broker it, sell it, do this. You just want a rebate. Mm -hmm. You just want them to give you back a $100,000 sure. check. So you generally are gonna to go to a state with a rebate. And so that's what a rebate is. It's cleaner, it's easier. Um, it still goes against your expenditure. Unlike a grant, where they just write you the check for 100,000 and give you a gift up front, and it doesn't matter what you spend it on. Okay. A rebate, you have to spend against qualified expenditures. Right. That's the difference between a rebate and a Got grant. Got it, so the difference is timing. You get the money before in a grant, you get the money after and in a rebate. And with a grant, there's no criteria. It's basically go make a film. Oh, I see. Okay, with a rebate, it's tell us what you spent when you made your film, mm -hmm. and we will credit you back against your expenditures. Gotcha, that makes sense, good. Now, there's more to it than that because there's also some intricacies, but that's the basic. And you, so you kind of answer the question, are all filmmakers, uh, uh, can all filmmakers take advantage of grants, tax credits, and rebates as long as they meet the criteria in that state? The criteria. Now, different states have different criteria. Like there's starting points. Some states say you have to, we're not looking at anything less than a half a million dollars. We're right. not looking at anything less than a million dollars. So you have to make sure that you qualify. And that's why in some states, basically, like most states have limited amounts of funds each year to put into these. And that's why you have to apply and make sure you get pre-approved so that you're in the queue to get your money back. There are a couple of places that have unlimited. You just have to go there, shoot, and no matter what you do, if you qualify, they give you the money. Yeah, great. So now, as a filmmaker, um, independent filmmaker, how do you access these programs? I mean, is there a list of places you contact in order to inquire about Yes, there's plenty of lists online. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of counting firms and, and it's, this is big business because states want to promote this to create economic activity there, right? So you can go online, you can just type in say, um, regional film tax, credit, tax and, or not regional film financial incentives yeah. and 10 lists will pop up. Really? I mean, I can show you one right now. They're usually in the form of maps and on the map, you can scan over them. I don't know if you want to put a, maybe you'll put a graphic into the video and you scan over them and it pops up and it says, okay, this state offers this, this state offers this, this, that, and they have different colors. Here's the transferable tax credits. Here's the re the rebates. Here's the regular tax credits. And, and it these maps basically show you, and here's the percentages that they're offering. So you mentioned a couple states. You mentioned Georgia and Louisiana, uh, and of course, Canada, is, which isn't another country, obviously, but what other states offer good rebates? As I said, there's 28 of them mm. as of the last count. Okay. There could be 29 right now, so I'm not gonna list them all. The yeah, map yeah. shows them all. Okay. Um, now, I have shot in, I mean, you know, some of them become a little more popular than others, primarily because they're rebate programs or because of the amount that they're offering. So like, for instance, New Mexico is very popular these days. Um, Kentucky, Oklahoma, because these offer, in, in addition to offering, say, like some would say offer a 20% amount, right? Some would offer 25, some would offer 30. So right away, 30 is gonna get your attention. But in addition to that, they often offer a bump of another 5% um, if you do other things. Mm. 
Like for instance, um, Oklahoma. If you go there and you use their, you post, you do your post production there, and you use their sound and music people, then they'll give you an additional five percent on your entire uh, program, on your entire film, not just your music, mm -hmm. which is a huge incentive yeah. to use their people. Right. All right. Um, Georgia, you put the peach on the end of the uh, thing, you get an additional five percent. So who's not going to do that? Right. Everybody does that. Um, then there's these things called, you know. Um, shooting outside major cities. So most places want to spread the wealth around their own state, their whole state. Mm -hmm. So the major cities, you might get 25%. But if you go outside 30 to 50 miles outside a major city and employ those people, you could get another bump, say another 5%. Mm -hmm. So these are all things that are built into these programs. So you just have to read about them and go on and read each one and decide which one suits you. Yeah. But the way you choose these things, okay, number one, you are a filmmaker making a film, right? right? So first and foremost, you got to make the right film. Like you can't go to a state that doesn't offer, you know, what you're looking. Let's say you're shooting a big cityscape, New York. Um, it might not fit into New Mexico where the mm -hmm. biggest city is Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. All right. So you might need that look for your movie. So first and foremost, you got to think of your movie and make sure that you're getting the look of what the state has right. to offer and whatever things. Now, I can tell you from experience, pretty well every state offers everything because whatever they don't offer, you can kind of cheat, movie magic. You can use green screens. You can do establishing shots in one place. Look, we all know that New York has been, we, everybody has shot New York in every state in the country, mm -hmm. okay? You do an establishing shot of Manhattan and then you do close-up shots and they're walking through, you know, like the, the series Suits, okay? That's shot in Toronto. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's based in New York, um, you know, there's all the same, the series, The Boys, also. I just happen to know what's shot in Toronto because I used to live there, right? Looks like New York, but it, you know, it's the United States, but it's shot in Toronto. Sure. So, you know, this is movie magic. So you can pretty well get what you want in every state. Every state says, oh, we have, you know, mountains, oceans, uh, lands, mountain, uh, uh, you know, beautiful cityscapes, beautiful desertscapes, all this kind of stuff. Most states have everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a great point. I like. I'm glad you brought that up because you could get thinking that I can't do it in this state because they don't have this that. But with movie magic, you're right. You can do it anywhere. Matter of fact, right from the get go, they started filming things in the Los Angeles area to emulate North Carolina. Like, and I went to one of these little lakes. I mean, you think you were in North Carolina? Ab absolutely. And you right could, in the middle of You LA. could think you're in Paris or Hong Kong or yeah. anything. And I that mean, was out without any movie magic. That was just a lake. Oh, that, okay, uh, fair yeah, enough. It was, yeah. uh, it was a neat setting up there in LA. But let's say like you're shooting on Western and you need these big, vast, you know, open areas where you're riding horses and stuff like that. I mean, the truth is, they exist almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. You just think of them in, you know, Montana and, you know, all these big open, yeah. you know, Western states, but they do exist everywhere. Yeah, it's amazing. And California, I think particularly in the traveling I've done, you can see almost every part of the world in this state. I mean, uh, you, from the Alps in Switzerland to um, the tropics. I mean, okay, it's now, all there. you know, you and I both live in California. We're talking from California. We're both big fans of California. I mean, there's one, there's other things that factor in. Okay, first of all, California, in my estimation, offers absolutely everything you're ever gonna need. Mm -hmm. in, in, in like on steroids, like beautiful. Yeah. You want beautiful mountainscapes that are here, beautiful mm -hmm. beaches, beautiful everything, okay? So, and I'm not trying to push California necessarily, but I do believe that you can get everything you want. Sure. Now here's the other thing you gotta think about, right? If you're shooting outdoors, you gotta think about weather. Like here we are in San Diego, we have 300 and what is it, 62 days of sunshine a year. I mean, that's, nobody has that. Yeah, except for so, last year. But. Except for last year, okay. <laughs> okay, but even then, it wasn't terrible. Um, so those are other things you have to consider. Now, if you're going to shoot, you know, a movie based in the winter, you're probably going to have to go up to, you know, Mammoth or something like that. Although we had a lot of snow last year. So you got to think of those things too. How much daylight you get, mm -hmm. how much weather, what the weather patterns and right. conditions are too, if you're shooting outdoors. Sure. And if you're shooting indoors, you got to think, okay, who has the facilities that I need, mm -hmm. that I can access? And I think that's why the movie industry started here because of a lot of those factors that you're mentioning, which brings us to a great point. Let's keep it here. Let's see things continue to happen here. Um, I think we did lose a lot to different states as far as uh, not providing the incentives here. Um, but thankfully, there's people like you 
who are working on bringing it back. And that brings us to a bill that you have been working on. And I want to talk to you about that because I know you've been working on this thing for a number of years and it's finally getting some traction with the state. And so I think it'd be interesting to learn more about AB 1421, which is the number of the bill, which started out as 3186, I think you mentioned a number of years ago. You know, we already have discussed the importance of bills like this. This bill would supply what? A grant or a... It's a rebate. It's a rebate. So this bill would supply a rebate. Tell us a little bit. Now, is this something that you've drafted alone or you've other people have been... You've drafted this alone. I drafted, but I can't. I'm not in part of the assembly, so I couldn't present it. It had to be sponsored by an assembly member. Right. But can I sort of tell you the history and the overview of why I did what what I this is all about? Right. Yes, that okay. would be great. So California, like every other state, has a financial incentive program. Um, it's a it's a tax credit program, transferable tax credit, and it's run through the California Film Commission, the CFC. Um, and it's it's a decent program. Um, but it's primarily designed for higher budget productions because you can only qualify if you have a movie or TV show for a million dollars or more. And they're looking for much bigger stuff. The only other challenge with, with this program is that it's, it caps out at $330 million a year. That's as much as they can give because um, for now they're mm -hmm. trying to expand it. And I think they should. Hopefully they will. Um, because they want to repatriate a lot of the big business that left the studios in Los Angeles for the most part. Because that's where most of it left from. Mm -hmm. You know, they have tons of infrastructure and studio space and everything in LA. And and now with Netflix and all the streaming platforms and, you know, there's even more, right? So a lot of this stuff left the state of California and they're bringing it back with this tax credit program for $330 million. And it's a good program, but you have to be making something for a million dollars or more. Now, I'm an independent filmmaker, and I've made seven movies, and six of those were made for less than a million dollars. Only one was 1 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. And if I was to make, remake that movie today with the technology that exists, I could make that probably for 750,000. Mm -hmm. The lighting is less, the, you know, there's just so much easier to make these movies, right? So, so many filmmakers shoot for less than a million dollars. And so they don't qualify for the California tax credit program. And even if they did, by the way, most of that money goes to the big studios, in, as it should in my estimation, because that's where the big money comes in. And 330 million is not a lot. It's not a ton. It goes really quickly. Yeah. There's a huge lineup. It's always oversubscribed, this program. Like, it gets spoken for very, very quickly, and there's like a lineup of 10 times as much that could have been spoken for. Has it made an effect? So oh, yeah, far? of course. Yeah, it's, so very, it's brought back some. Absolutely. Business. It's been very positive for, for the state of California. I'd say, you know, most of it goes to the LA region, but that's okay because that's where the infrastructure is. How long has it been in effect? Uh, I think it's been in for, I don't know, maybe eight, nine, ten years. That long already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's been revised. It's on like maybe, say, eight years, okay? Um, I'd have to look it up. Um, it's had various revisions. Like it's expanded and they're trying, they're constantly trying to expand yeah, develop it. Yeah, it, sure. Yeah. So it'd be great. The more they can give, you know, the more business they'll get back. But this competition is stiff out there because a lot of people are, you know, vying for that, mm -hmm. for that business. Sure. All right. Now, getting back to the independent filmmaker, it doesn't even matter because even if that program expands, you can't qualify for less than a million dollars. Like you have to, it starts at a million dollars or more. So if your budgets are less than a million, you, there's no point in even, like there, you can't qualify, sure. right? So generally speaking, me... Like, I've made seven movies, okay? Um, four of them I shot in Canada. Two of them I shot outside the state. I only shot one here. And the only reason I shot it here is because I got a lot of free resources locally and I just felt like staying in California that summer. Didn't make financial sense for me to shoot it here, but I stayed here because I wanted to. Mm -hmm. okay, it was more of a selfish thing because I produced it and finance, I owned the movie, so I could make that decision. But in hindsight, I probably left... Hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars on the table in what could have been rebates in other states, mm -hmm. but there was convenience and free stuff and everything like that. Okay, so I made that. That was a business decision. But generally speaking, I want to shoot. I'm shooting two movies next year. I want to shoot my movies here in my own backyard. We have greatest places to shoot. We have the best weather. We have the best people. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a great place. This is where the movie industry primarily began mm -hmm. and where it belongs. Okay, California. 
And I say that not, I say, listen, I'm formerly Canadian and I love California. I love living here, mm -hmm. but I love shooting here because mm -hmm. it's got everything you need. It it's, it's primarily the trained people. And mm -hmm. like we're in San Diego, we're two hours away from the biggest talent base in the world. So people commute all the time, you know, actors and whatever you need. So I said to, I said, this is nuts that I'm going to have to, that I constantly looking for places to leave California and take my films to shoot elsewhere because I, they're less than a million dollars. And I'm thinking there's got to be hundreds, if not thousands of other independent filmmakers in California who are doing the exact same thing. And, you know, sometimes don't even know that things exist or whatever. Um, so it's just crazy to leave that amount of business off the table in the state of California and make us go elsewhere and not employ the people and do all the incentives that, you know, that these things can offer. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, because I'm a bit of a doer, you know, mover and a shaker, as you know. And I said, enough's enough. Like, I am going to try to create, um, to work with the powers that be to create an incentive program that complements the California Film Commission program, which is the million dollar plus thing, because mm -hmm. that handles the big stuff, right? And let's take care of the little guys. So, and I know exactly what the little guys need because I'm one of them. And so what I did is I went to, this was about six years ago, I wrote up a program and I said, this is what I have in mind. And I took it to Todd Gloria. Actually, first I took it to the county supervisors here in San Diego, to the supervisor. And I said, hey, um, I got this idea. Why don't we create this local incentive program where financial incentive program where we can bring way more filmmaking to San Diego. And they and and the reason we would do that is the jobs and the this and then you know all the economic development stuff that goes with tax credit programs. Mm -hmm. And they said great idea, we love it and and it's San Diego and it's close to LA and we have all the resources and blah blah blah. Great idea. Let's do it. What's it going to take? So I said, well, first we need a program. So they said um, but money and all this kind of stuff. And I said, well, you know, the more we can offer, the better it's going to be. They said, you're going to do better if you take it to the state because the state has more money than the county. All right. So we're going to introduce you to Todd Gloria, who was at the time an assembly member. He's now the mayor of San Diego. And we'll introduce you. He's going to like this. He likes local development, economic stuff and everything. Anyways, I, one thing leads to another. I meet him. And he says, yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay, we need a program. Write up the program. And I go, okay. And they, he says, Todd says to me, he says, if we're doing this, we want the best program. You write up what exactly what indie filmmakers would want. And we don't want them going elsewhere, okay? If we're going to do this, let's do it properly. We don't want to send them elsewhere to other states and give them options. We want to be able to say, hey, you want a good program for your low budget needed film? This is it. You come here. So I said, fantastic. And I wrote up the best program. It was a rebate as opposed to a tax credit for the reasons we discussed earlier, because rebates are way better. Almost everything qualifies. Like there's a lot of things in other states that don't qualify. So there's all kinds of these bump ups and everything that make it like so perfect. It's the perfect program for independent filmmakers. And so I write up the bill. I give it, Todd becomes the sponsor. It's a sponsor in the assembly, all right? And the bill is called 3186 at the time. This is about four years ago now. It takes about a year to draft the thing. I work with his, you know, people in his office. We draft up and they formalize it into an assembly bill. And it's this great rebate program, financial rebate program. And it's actually designed for the region of San Diego as a test pilot program for three years. Okay, so wonderful. This is in the fall of 2019. Okay, so the assembly takes a break and we go back and in February of 2020, Todd presents the bill to the assembly. And the way it goes, there's four steps. You go, first you present, then you take it to committee. So he takes it to committee, committee loves it, which is the arts and entertainment sports committee. There's a whole thing, okay? Yeah. They love it, they say great. And that's in February of 2020. Now, do you remember what else happened in February of 2020? Well, we we're in the middle of a nutty pandemic. And then this thing called COVID hits, right. okay? So all of a sudden, the world goes upside down, everything becomes COVID relief, 
and this thing drops to the bottom of the bucket as it should you know because there were way higher priorities mm -hmm. and it kind of gets buried all right because there were so many other things that had to be addressed and a lot of things got buried at the time so then a year later todd runs for um mayor todd says i've had enough in the assembly runs for mayor of san diego wins and leaves the assembly so now the bill is sitting there and it's got no sponsor so i said todd you know i appreciate that you're mayor but like what do i do now what's this mm -hmm. bill gonna do I said you're gonna need somebody else so one thing leads to another and i meet david alvarez mm -hmm. who is the assembly member for district 80 which is basically southern san diego national city chula vista you know parts of so that's his region all right and i present to him and he says i love it this is great um it's exactly what we need and we rewrite the bill his office i represent it redraft it now even better than it was before i add in way more bells and whistles and we redraft it and it becomes bill 1421 um, and he presents it to the assembly this about and it, we, it got read in april right okay this past april and it goes to the committee and i actually went to the hearing and you know if you want to put a link in your in your program there's actually it was recorded so the 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 hearing where i presented the bill to the committee is online you can actually watch it so you should probably, yeah, I probably saw a still of you sitting there okay well there's a link to the actual video so yeah. you can watch it all right and so again passes unanimously nine committee members say we love it we're taking it to the next step which is what we call appropriations right. all right so now it's got to get funded and we're asking for 25 million dollars over three years mm -hmm. which isn't a ton of money no. but you know relatively speaking it's you know not a drop in the bucket all right but relative to the rest of the stuff that throws around it actually is um and i get word in late or about mid-June that the Appropriations Committee is not going to approve it. Appropriations, those are the so, guys who hand out the, the money. The money, right. They, they say, okay, because many, many bills go to them and then they have to decide what they're going to fund. And Appropriations says, sorry, we're not funding it this year. Did they this, give you any kind of reasoning no, for that? No, they don't give reasons. They don't give reasons. Okay, so, so then, but because I'm very tenacious and feel like this is very, very important, I say, okay, no problem. I contact David and I say, David, you know, this is a shame, blah, blah, blah. How many times can you resubmit a bill? He says, basically as many times as you want, but usually not more than three. I said, would you like to resubmit next year for next year's assembly? He goes, thanks, Jeff, but I can't because I've already committed to, there's so many things you can do. So he overcommitted on other, you know, initiatives that he wants to mm -hmm. get passed. So anyways, I'm in the midst right now of talking to various other assembly members who potentially would be the sponsor of this bill. And I have a lot of interest because it's a good program for California. Um, so I feel like I'm going to be able to get the right sponsor and we're gonna resubmit next year. And if it doesn't go next year, I'm gonna resubmit the following year. And I think I'll go for three years and hopefully one of these years it'll pass. But I'm gonna up now I learned a lot. I learned mm -hmm. a lot on how this process works. Yeah, that was my next question. <laughs> okay, so one of the reasons it's really good to do this podcast with you is because we need a lot of support from filmmakers in California to help their voices be heard so that they, they, they will get will the assembly will be more eager to support this bill. Mm -hmm. Even they they know how important it is, but when people line up and stand up and say, hey, I'm behind this, I'm behind this, one after the other. Mm -hmm. You know, we had maybe 20 or 30 people who did call-ins, but if we had 500 people who did a call-in or, or 5,000 people who wrote in and said, I'm, I'm a filmmaker, I'm in support right. of this thing, that's how you get to the top of the pile. Mm -hmm. um, Hollywood has big lobbyists who can, they spend lots of money to, you know, make sure their things are represented. This is small, we're independent filmmakers, so I'm not expecting any money or anything like that but I do need voices. We need voices from the filmmakers to stand up and say, hey, we want to park this program. We need this program for the state of California. It's good for us. We don't want to leave our homes, shoot in other states. We're behind this. Mm -hmm. That's what we need next time. Good. And so would you change anything in the bill for next time? I'll no, the bill is solid I, and, and it, everybody liked it. It passed, like I said, through committee unanimously. Um, it's a great program for filmmakers. 
you know, if I was going to change anything, I'd like to ask for more money. But, you know, that's a political thing. Basically, the assembly member who's going to sponsor this will say, hey, I think this is the right amount because they have their finger on that pulse. Right. Um, but, you know, the more we have to work with, the more films we can offer incentives to. So the message would be, you know, when this comes up again, we've got to get the word out. It's coming up and get people to write in. Where do they write in? Do you have that information at this point? No, not yet. So I'm in the process right now of trying to secure a sponsor, an assembly person who's going to sponsor the bill, and they will present it. When we do that, then I th I'm not sure, but I think you have, we may have to submit a new bill. So we'll just take cut and paste that one into a new bill, or maybe we can resubmit this bill. I don't know how that works, mm -hmm. but whatever it is, when we do get that information, then it would be great for filmmakers across California to write in or phone in, and we'll have that information to offer to them. Okay, good. Um, dealing with the state, um, pleasant, unpleasant? I'm going to use one word, political. Yeah. Yeah. I love that stuff. So, you know, you have to have a lot of patience. Things move very slowly. Mm -hmm. Everything is overly dramatic, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so I'm not in politics, but I should have been because I, I can deal with that stuff. I'm okay with it all. Yeah. Um, well, we noticed that even on a local level here in Vista, that same. Those okay. Points. As much, I'm very anxious. I'm very tenacious, but, you know, I've learned how to have some patience. Mm -hmm. Things take time. Yeah. So, and I'm persistent. So if it takes two or three times to get through, I'm going to give it, that's what we're going to give it. A lot of times that happens. So the state is fine. It's got, here's the process. Here's what you go through. I mean, remember, these elected people are just people like us, but they decided to run for office and they got elected. And now they have a job to do. And, you know, but you can have normal, regular conversations because they're regular citizens. And you say, hey, this is why this is going to be good for our state and for filmmakers. And, you know, a lot of them on that committee know filmmakers. And, you know, they, they deal with sports and entertainment and all this kind of stuff. So they just, they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. and, and remember, they're also overseeing the California Film Commission program. So they understand that. They understand the philosophy behind it. Sure. And the beauty of, of this committee is... They, they realize, and I presented it this way, that this is complementary to that program. It's not competing. I mean, we're not even competing for their funding. Like, we're not saying, hey, carve out 25 million out of the 330 million and give it to us. We're saying, no, no, take it out of the general fund, give it to us. If anything, give them more, all right? So that we can be dealing, we can be catering to low budget filmmakers and high budget filmmakers. Yeah, great. Well, that's great. Appreciate what you're doing and the time you've spent on this and I know nobody's paying you to do it. Um, but once this thing is established, you know, let's just say it gets established, right? Yeah. Who would run the operations down here in San Diego? Is that something that you would like to do? Okay, well, first of all, the next iteration of this bill might not be San Diego based. It depends who the assembly person is. And by the way, regardless of who the assembly person is, they might want to make it a California wide program, mm -hmm. which is fine. That's wrong. That would be fine. You'd need more money. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, you know, if it stays San Diego based, that would be fine also. I mean, obviously, I would prefer that. But um, it would be a pilot program to start with anyways, a three-year pilot in any region to see, is this working? You know, we'd have to see how many films are being made, how much economic development is, mm -hmm. uh, is, is being generated. And then it would expand probably with a lot more money and go statewide. Um, if it came to San Diego, then yes, I would apply to, I would like to administer the program. Right. Yeah. Um, I'd have to apply like everybody else. There's a whole process. Um, well, I think I would I'm be... glad to hear that you want to do that. Oh, of course I would. I, I think I'd be really qualified to do it, yeah. considering I wrote the bill. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's not a no-brainer. I mean, somebody else, you know, just because I wrote it doesn't mean... It, like, it's not a job creation bill for me. It's a bill for filmmaking. Mm -hmm. So I will apply like everybody else. And um, I'd like to be involved. There'll be a board, sure. as there is with everything, that m makes the decisions and kind of oversees it. Right. Well, that's great. Good to hear that, too. Because uh, I think... Um, you know, you, you are qualified and you have the passion for it. You're the guy with the passion and the business sense. Um, it's a great combination of things, I think, especially in the industry. I've always appreciated your business sense. I'm going to add one thing to that. Okay. I'm also a filmmaker. 
Like, I know the trials and tribulations that filmmakers go through. I mean, I, yeah. people say to me, filmmakers always say to me, oh, Jeff, you have no idea how hard it is to make a film. And I go, what do you mean I have no idea? You've done it once. I've done it seven times. Yeah. I know exactly what it's all about. Yeah. I've lived that through that process seven times. Yeah, and what I mean by passion is your artistic ability. And, um, you know, you've had that as well. And, and you are cool. <laughs> I'm not. You know, <laughs> I told you. I, I told you that the that one compliment my my oldest son once paid me this reverse compliment. He said, "Dad, the only thing cool about you is that you actually know you're not cool." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If they want to find out what you're up to, where do they go? If you want to reach me, you can go to my website. It's called Deverett Media. So deverettmedia.com, and you can find out about me and contact me, or I do consulting if you're interested in help me helping you make your films or finance them or talking to you about AI or whatever, okay? Now, in addition, um, I have been, in addition to this tax credit thing I've been working on, I've been very busy developing a brand new platform for independent filmmakers to access resources at a more cost-effective rate. Um, it's called the Indie Film Community. And it also has a website, so IndieFilmCommunity.com. Um, and there's a, U a YouTube channel with lots and lots of video of me talking about everything film related. Budgeting, scheduling, insurance, legals. So it doesn't matter where you're making your film. These are things that you need in a film. Yeah. Like this isn't about equipment because that's local. Mm -hmm. It's not about actors. It's, okay, it's more the global bigger stuff. Legals is a big thing, a whole legal package. Generally, filmmakers get ripped off. Um, when they do their legals, um, but it's also um, a primarily, so that's to help them make their films more cost effectively, if you're a member of this, associate, like this web platform, um, and then you can access all this stuff, including consulting and everything at much more cost effective prices, but then the big thing is distribution marketing, all right? This biggest struggle is after you've made your film, how do you get it out into the marketplace and start to create audience awareness and monetize it? So th most of the tools and, and education is based on that side because that's the biggest struggle for indie filmmakers. Yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, that's great, Jeff. I, see, that's why you're the new brand of cool. <laughs> and, and I like that. And he's always <laughs> helping you know, develop things that will help filmmakers. And so we're going to continue this. If you don't mind, we'll get back together again and see how this bill's going and um, a number of other things we can talk about. Um, but until then, find out more about The Film Hub by going to uh, following us on Instagram, The Film Hub, Inc., or visit our website at thefilmhubinc.com. So until next time, see you then. The Film Hub. Inspire the creative. Ignite the world.